The enduring images of Neil Armstrong and David Scott, two of America's pioneering space explorers, are familiar depictions of the astronauts in a most unfamiliar environment, on the surface of the moon. Armstrong, of course, became the first human being ever to walk on the lunar surface when he landed in July 1969 as commander of Apollo 11. Two years later, on July 31, 1971, as commander of Apollo 15, Scott became the seventh person to explore amid the lunar dust. Lost to those who know them only for their lunar heroics, however, is the experience the two men shared as the crew of the Gemini 8 mission in March 1966, a flight that brought them, together, to the very edge of tragedy. The Gemini 8 mission profile called for a milestone achievement of the U.S. space program. Armstrong and Scott would be the first American crew to dock their spacecraft with another vehicle. Thus, at launch on March 16, 1966, two spacecraft lifted off at Cape Kennedy, an unmanned Agena rocket that would serve as a target vehicle, and the Gemini 8 capsule containing Armstrong and Scott. For two orbits around the Earth, the astronauts steadily closed the distance between their Gemini 8 craft and their target. They caught up with the Agena about six hours after launch, and a brief while later, Armstrong maneuvered the two spacecraft together to achieve the historic first docking of the U.S. space program. Then, as the astronauts passed over China, out of communications with mission control, they began their first test of docked flight, remotely switching control of the flight to the Agena vehicle. Almost immediately, they noted a strange result. The linked spacecraft began to revolve. Several minutes elapsed while they ran through a series of maneuvers intended to stop the rolling motion, but by the time they resumed communications with mission control, the docked Gemini Agena was rolling more rapidly. Assuming the problem was being caused by the target vehicle, the astronauts decided to undock their Gemini capsule from the Agena. When they did, however, they were shocked to find themselves tumbling end over end. Their vision blurred by the rapid motion and in imminent danger of losing consciousness, Armstrong and Scott maintained a remarkable poise. They reasoned that the most likely cause of their predicament was that one of their maneuvering rockets, the thrusters which would normally be fired in short bursts to propel them around in space, had failed to shut off. Desperate to stop the sickening fast spinning, the astronauts decided that they had no choice but to engage their re-entry system and fire the rockets they would normally use only to guide their way back to Earth. Exhausting the re-entry rockets might mean disaster later, if they could not properly orient Gemini 8 on the way home. But allowing the out-of-control maneuvering rocket to continue to push them end over end would mean immediate catastrophe. Armstrong tried to engage Gemini 8's re-entry control system, but the system failed to engage. Scott also took a turn, but again the system failed to respond. Remarkably, they were able to maintain their bearings for a third try, which worked. The re-entry rockets fired and successfully countered the stuck maneuvering thruster long enough for the fuel in the maneuvering rocket to run out. The crisis averted, Armstrong and Scott safely returned to Earth. Marked by their harrowing experience during Gemini 8, as individuals capable of remarkable composure in the most difficult circumstances, Neil Armstrong and David Scott would each go on to explore among the lunar dust providing further example of the courage and resourcefulness that are at the heart of the highest ideals of exploring space.